Hi guys, welcome back to the final part of this series. Today we're going to continue with the obelisk. But before we do that, just want to remind you that we have our new course, the rigging course. It's up and running in all of the sites that you normally get our courses. So if you want to check it out, look at the description below and you're going to find all the links. So let's get to it. Uh, I'm here inside of Unreal Engine and this Unreal Engine 5, by the way, I'm, I've been, uh, we've been playing around with Unreal Engine 5 here in the studio for some local projects that we're developing. And uh, yeah, this is actually the VR template. I don't have the VR setup right now, uh, but this is the VR template. We're doing an experience here. Um, we're updating an experience that we've worked on before and I'm doing some tests here. So I want to use this since this is a pretty close to a production uh it's not ready, of course, but it's a it's a production environment that we're going to be able to see our asset in, okay? So I'm going to jump into Substance real quick, and I'm going to go into our file, which is the obelisk. And I'm going to show you how we can export this guy into Unreal, because uh, right now, uh, the textures and everything are looking really, really good. Look at this. Look at this. Damn. I was gone through, uh, I was gone the whole weekend. Um, we have family on the, on the city uh, nearby, and, and we usually travel there. And um, yeah, this... I haven't seen this one in a while, so I really like it. <laughs> I think it's a really nice prop. I think it's a really nice model. I mean, it took us, what, like two hours to do? So not not, not bad, right? So I'm going to go file. I'm going to say export textures. We're going to, of course, select our usual um, place. In this case, assets obelisk. That's fine. From our uh, next to live project, which we've been using for the past. I think we're about to to have like three months nonstop of video. So let's keep, the, let's keep the ball rolling. By the way, our goal, we want to reach 20 thousand uh subscribers 20,000 yeah yeah 20,000 subscribers by the end of the year let's see if we can get there so uh yeah we're just gonna obelisk here and the output template is the most important part because we're gonna select unreal engine okay we're gonna select unreal engine 4 packed and there's something very interesting that happens with unreal engine 4 packed i'm gonna explain it uh as soon as we get the the output i'm gonna export this at 4k we want to go like like really really high on the on the elements and i usually export this as target files so yeah, that's fine. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna say export. So now, as you can see here, we have three maps. We have our base color, our normal, and our occlusion roughness metallic. Now you can see that they have a very bad name, Obelisk Low R uh, Lambert 3 base color. That's because Substance here on the output templates, it uses certain flags. So for instance here, it uses the flag mesh and then the flag texture set and then the name. So you, if you want, you can edit this flag so that it's not exported with those names, or you can use this little software, which is called Advanced Renamer. Strongly recommend it. Really, really cool. Uh, it's free. However, if you want to support the um, what's the word, the the authors, you can of course buy it or uh, donate, and uh, it's very easy to use. You can just like drag and drop your textures over here, and then let me remove all of this. Add a method. I'm gonna say um, replace, and I'm gonna look for obelisk low r underscore lambert three so the whole thing and i'm just, I'm just going to replace it with obelisk so as you can see here it's going to look for all of that uh like section of the name and it's just going to replace it with the basic name and it's very very handy i've used this software for quite a while and it's uh, super amazing um because it's just it's just great so imagine having to rename like hundreds of textures that's an easy way to do it advanced renamer that's the name of that's the name of it so I am just gonna now go into Unreal here. This is again a project that I set up. This couple of rocks are from the Quixel Bridge. If you guys want me to uh, tell you a little bit about that one, uh, let me know in the comments and I can make a short video about that one, which is really, really cool. I did not model the, these rocks. Uh, they're actually not modeled, they're uh, photogametry. So they, they took real photos of these rocks somewhere in the world, I think it's Ireland or Norway or something, and uh, they converted them into, into 3D assets, so yeah. Now, I'm going to go here into the content browser and I'm going to create a new uh, folder. Remember, organization is everything. I'm going to call this meshes. And here inside of meshes, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this obelisk. In case we need like new meshes later on, this is where we're going to find them. And now from our little export folder, we can just grab the, um, the textures and drop them right here. And there we go. So the textures are now in. Now, I'm also going to import the object, which if you remember is this obelisk low uh, R, which is the obelisk ready. I'm just going to drag and drop it here because we're going to be using the low poly object inside of Unreal. That's the whole reason why we did everything. We don't want to have as many polygons or as 
yeah, we don't have, we want to have all like all the million polygons that we have in Silver, so we want to keep it optimized, right? So that's why we're using this one. Now, very important here, I do not want, there's a couple of options that you sometimes get. What's this doing? I do not want to create collisions right now because we're not going to use collisions. Um, I am going to convert the scene because it's an FBX, so I want this to be converted to the proper uh, UE4, or in this case, UE5. See, the, <laughs> this is a beta or a demo version of UE5, so as you can see, the even the tooltips are not all uh, updated. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to say import, and we're going to get at this one right here. Now, you can see that this guy actually imported the material already, which is the Lambert 3. We're just going to use that one. I'm just going to press F2 to rename it, and I'm going to call it M underscore obelisk. I like to use the M um, flag at first, just to make sure that the same material. Um, it's something that pretty much anyone who has learned Unreal in the past like several years uses because that's the way they teach it. Uh, so just let's wait for this to save real quick. Just a couple of seconds here. By the way, we have a very cool surprise uh, for the next couple of days. So this video should be up today, is Sunday, so it should be up on Monday. Um, so Tuesday is probably going to be the day where we have the, the small surprise. So make sure to leave a like, subscribe. I know who's not subscribing, by the way, guys. Eh? Well, of course, I don't know exactly who's not subscribing, but we know that there's a lot of viewers out there that are not subscribing to the channel. You don't lose anything, guys, and you help us a lot. So make sure to hit that like button, the subscribe. And the only thing is you're going to get a little alert when we upload a video, which we do every day. But hopefully you you like our content and are, are happy with it. So there we go. So now, as you can see, I just drag and drop our obelisk right here. And uh, it's not just one. I can just press Alt and duplicate and have like a couple of them. See the scale? The scale is really, really cool. They're not as big as a, like a mountain here, like the stone. But they're pretty massive. I mean, compared to like these guns, which are the, the guns that a character would use. Like this are quite, quite big. Now, I'm doing a little bit of a hack here because for some reason the skylight is bugged a little bit in this uh, template or something. And I can't make it to give it like some sort of like ambient illumination. So I'm using a, a little like a spotlight over here or, or just point light to make sure that the shadows are not as dark. You can see that they're a little bit dark over there. Uh, but yeah. So now let's build the material real quick. Again, it's just a short video just to make sure that everything that we've done so far in the last week um, goes full circle. I'm going to grab all of the three textures, and now I'm going to show you why the Unreal Engine 4 packed texture or template is so good. You're going to get three textures. The first one's going to be your color map, and that one's very, very, uh, pretty simple, pretty straightforward, right? So it's just the color of the object, so just need for this to upload. There we go. So this is the diffuse map, which is just the color, and the RGB result, meaning the three colors, the three channels, are going to go into the base color. This is the normal map, and again, just the three colors are going to go directly into the normal map. And this one, this one's a tricky one. I'm actually going to double click it to go into the options of the texture. And what's happening here is that the three maps that we're saving inside of this map are all black and white maps. We have the ambient occlusion, we have the metallic, and we have the roughness. So the ambient occlusion is just going to tell us where the object is occluded and where it's, it's just completely flat. It's going to tell us the roughness. It's going to tell us which parts of the objects are more rough or more, um, in this case, uh, they reflect more light or less rough. Uh, and then the other one's going to tell us which parts of the objects are metallic and non-metallic. Uh, now, you can see that right now we're seeing the green channel and the red channel. That's because the blue channel, which is usually the metallic channel, um, has nothing. All of the object is, is stone, so not there's no parts in the object that are metallic. Therefore, the, the blue, the metallic map, is going to be empty. Now, the green map, as you can see, this is the roughness. It's going to tell us which parts of the objects are a little bit rougher than others. And finally, the red one is the ambient occlusion. So the reason why this template is so good is because it combines three maps into a single texture, and that saves us a lot of space. So whenever you're working on Unreal, I strongly recommend you use the, the, the packed template so that you save three of these guys into a single one. One thing that you definitely need to do, and it's very, very important, if you do not do this, nothing, well, it's, it is gonna work, but it's not gonna work like you expect it to, it's this little button right here. In the texture file, since this is entering as a as an RGB texture, a texture that has three channels, it's automatically applying an sRGB correction so that the colors that you see here are properly calibrated to the monitor. But we don't want that because even though this is a texture that's a, an RGB texture, we actually want the individual channels of the object. So we need to turn this off. Super, super important to turn this off. This is going to become something called as a linear texture because it has black and white as a linear transition instead of having like the sRGB curve that's a little bit um, curved. <laughs> so make sure that you double click on your occlusion roughness and metallic and turn off the sRGB. 
Something's going to change over here on this guy right here. You definitely need to make sure that this is instead of a sampler type color, it's going to be linear color. Okay, very important, linear color. Now we're just going to block things where they're supposed to be. So R is going to go into ambient occlusion. G is going to go into roughness and B is going to be into metallic. We save this little shader and that should be it. Now, I think the reason or one of the reasons why the skylight might not be working properly is because I'm using the VR template and VR is a whole nother monster uh, because you need to optimize things in a specific way to make sure that you hit the frame rate that you need for the, for the goggles. So that might be the reason. That does not mean that you can't use it, of course. Uh, but if you're downloading the Unreal Engine 5 to follow along with this tutorial, maybe try the third person character template instead of this one so that the uh, skylight works a little bit better and you don't have as many or as, uh, as many issues as I have right now. Now, uh, keep in mind also that right now, as the time of this recording, which is uh, mid-September, uh, the Unreal Engine 5 is still in early development. Well, not early development, but still in development. So the the full like release uh, version, it's it's not out. Like what you're seeing here is a, a build of the engine that you can use and you can try yourself, uh, but it's not complete. There's, there's still things that people are uh, working with, okay? So uh, they did promise, though, that the first build, the 5.01, I think it's going to be, it's going to be compatible with whatever we do here with 5.0. Uh, so if you're building or, or creating a, a just like a basic uh, pitch for your game or a basic construction like an alpha or a beta, uh, you should be able to jump onto the, onto the stable versions of Unreal Engine 5 once it releases, which we will make sure to keep you posted. And uh, there we go. So, yeah, here it is. So I can see a couple of issues here with the shading, uh, which it is expected. And again, I think it's due to the, uh, what's the word, due to the um, the problems that we saw with the, um, or the, the things that I'm talking about with the engine. So it's kind of weird though. Let's let's rotate it around and see if that's it. Yeah, it, it seems to be it. It seems to be like the normal maps and the and the shading is not working properly. But as you can see, the object is right here. It's it's now on the engine. We can see all of the little details. Like look at the texture. That's a very good resolution for the texture because even if the character is like super super close to the obelisk, he's still gonna be able to see like most of the things. So yeah, that's it, guys. This is the the final thing. Now. Um, we could also jump into Marmoset. Let me know if you guys want to learn a little bit about Marmoset. Marmoset is another engine that we can use to present our, our work, to present our things. Uh, it's good. It, it's not a like a like a full uh, full uh, engine because it doesn't have any sort of like programming or anything, but it has enough information that we can present things in a nicer way. So I just moved the spotlight there. This definitely helps. As you can see, it solves the, the shadowing issues. So yeah, there you go. So let me know what you guys think about this exercise. I think that was a, a cool one. It's just a prop piece. I know a lot of you guys have been asking about like a full environment uh, that we can do. I think it's gonna be a little bit difficult to to do that here for the for the channel uh, because it will it will definitely take a long uh, time. Uh, but I would be happy to to pass that on to Naline and, and ask if we can do a full course for that. I'm working on one right now. I can't spoil what it is, uh, but it's not an environment course. So um, we'll keep you guys posted. Anyway, that's it for me, guys. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, comment, subscribe. I know who is not doing it. Just click the little bell down there so that you get our notifications. Again, it really helps the channel, keeps us afloat. So thank you very much. I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.